What's up you guys, Michael here. Airbnb is an amazing platform for regular folks like you and me to invest in real estate and then list those places for rent on a short-term basis and start making substantial cash flow. Operating short-term rentals typically provides a much greater cash flow every single month than the traditional long-term rentals do. I've noticed that the real estate market has become so expensive and honestly very cost prohibitive for many investors to invest their money and still reap the same rewards on a cash flow basis and an ROI basis. In fact, it's become so competitive that we've lost bids on multiple properties in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, we were outbid by as much as $100,000 on a property. And I've noticed that most of the turnkey properties end up in a bidding war, especially if they have previous rental history. A turnkey rental property just means that the property itself is completely furnished and basically ready to rent the day that you close on the house. This is attractive to many investors, especially those investing out of state or from a distance. They don't have the money or the time to spend on furnishing and then take the you know additional two to four weeks it does to stand up the property and get it listed. The only issue with turnkey properties is they attract many, many more investors than a property that is either unfurnished or maybe needs a little cosmetic rehab to get on, get up and running. And I'm trying to stay away from those bidding wars when possible. So our strategy for 2021 so far has been to find properties that need a little bit of a cosmetic rehab and maybe they're not furnished or not furnished well enough to attract you know, many investors. In doing so, we've been able to uncover a tremendous deal in our most recent house that we just closed on last week in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. This deal is going to be, without a doubt, the most profitable investment, especially from an equity stake. And I'm going to explain all of these numbers in detail, the cost of the investment, how much we're spending to furnish and rehab the property, what we're changing about the property, and what the expected revenue numbers and cash flow numbers are going to be on Airbnb. I truly hope that you guys value the transparency I provide in these videos. If you do, please don't forget to throw me a like and subscribe to follow along for more content in the future. All right, so location. We are gung-ho on the Tennessee mountains right now. It's been a great rental market for the past you know, few decades, but recently the real estate market has just been booming and with coronavirus the past you know, nine months or so, it has really pushed a lot of vacationers away from regional cities and into regional vacation markets, such as the mountains, lakes, and beaches. The reason we chose Gatlinburg, Tennessee, is the entry or the gateway to the Smoky Mountain National Park. And for those that don't know, and honestly, this number surprised me as well, but the Smoky Mountain National Park is the number one most visited national park in the United States. So from that perspective, you almost have a guaranteed large amount of foot traffic coming into the area to see the national park throughout the entire year. So I really like that there's less uh, seasonality uh, with Gallenberg and the mountains than maybe a beach or a lake property might have. Um, so really the only slow months that we're going to see are January and February, and then you're going to have spring break, summer, fall, and then the winter holidays as well to top off the year for tremendous cash flow potential. So we've been working very closely with our realtor in the area and she had sent us this property and it is one of the strangest properties I have ever seen in Gatlinburg, let alone any property I've evaluated in, in any area of the country. But I'll show you guys a few photos from the property and this is what it looks like today and we've already begun the rehab process on this this week. There's really no straight edges on this house. It's an extremely different in shape and honestly every room is very different. It looks like you have a hobbit house on the right portion of the house, almost like a spaceship or something. Um, you have a massive rooftop, which we're gonna touch on in a little bit, which I really like unique things about properties that allow it to stand out on Airbnb. And then you go to the left side of the house and you see this little yurt looking like thing we call the hobbit house. Um, so the main house is a three bedroom, 4.5 baths and just shy of 2,500 square foot. The yurt is a one bedroom in-law suite that has 700 square feet and it has its own kitchen, own bathroom, um, and can sleep probably four to six people in there alone. The biggest selling points for me were the rooftop lounge and the game room. Now the rooftop lounge is around 2,500 square foot of rooftop space. That is almost unheard of in the Tennessee mountains market. I have not seen a place like this that has that much rooftop patio space. So the possibilities 
and the emotional and kind of sex appeal that the property can have immediately through this one photo after we kind of redo the surface of the deck and then you know put all of our furniture and finishing touches on it is going to draw a lot of attention and appeal from those on Airbnb looking to book a unique place. The game room is one of the coolest game room spaces I've seen out of any house. It's a way more unique than our other house in Gatlinburg. Most game rooms are just the typical you know, rectangular shape and they have enough room for maybe a pool table, some arcade games, and a TV. This game room is massive. It is a semicircle, so about 180 degrees, and it is all centered around a bar top seating, so it actually feels like you're at a real like bar where you can watch uh, you know, games or movies or something like that. And beyond that, it has enough room for a pool table, some other arcade games, a poker table, and a bunch of other cool stuff that we're going to add. What I liked about this house is it had less pressure from other investors because of its weird shape and it needed some cosmetic work. It needs new paint, new furniture, and just some updates. So I'm gonna review some of those updates that we're gonna do and I'm certainly gonna post a video in the future of before and after photos and give you guys a very detailed breakdown of everything that we did. But a few of the things right off the bat, it's gonna have new paint on the inside and outside. We're converting the game room into a theater room, which I'm gonna to touch on and how much equity that's going to bring us just by adding the additional square footage and adding the extra room, which is gonna be cool, super unique, and have a theater seatings, projector screen, surround sound, all that good stuff. We're gonna take up the carpet and all the bedrooms and the game room, and we're gonna add new uh, luxury vinyl plank flooring. We're gonna add that same plank in the living room to cover up this tile that uh, doesn't look all that great in there. It doesn't look very cabiny. So we're gonna fix that by adding uh, some wood tones and we're gonna keep it rustic, but we're gonna furnish it more on the modern side to help stand out from the traditional cabin in the area, which honestly just looks like grandma's cabin. They all kind of blend in. So we're looking to stand out on Airbnb and the way to do that is to catch people's attention on the first few photos on your listing. So we spend more money on those key areas, like I mentioned before, the game room, theater room, and the rooftop patio. All right, so we're going to dive into the investment details, how we plan to make quite a bit of money just through the equity, through the purchase, and then the value add we're doing with the rehab, and then what we plan to make from a revenue perspective and a cash flow perspective on Airbnb. Now, I wanted to state that we are actually going in on this investment with some friends of ours who we met uh, here in Nashville. They built the two houses across the street. So he is a you know a home builder and has a very unique skill set. So how we wanted to approach this investment was to go with somebody who had more knowledge in rehabbing a place that was more involved work than just you know paint and floors. Um, so he's going to be managing the rehab. My wife and I are going to be leading the furnishing and then we're splitting all the costs 50-50 and then my wife and I are going to be managing the listing on Airbnb and we're gonna split the profits 50-50. So it's a very even partnership and we're super excited to go in on it with them. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the offering price. The property was listed at 499 and as most properties in Gatlinburg, we, were, we weren't sure how competitive it was going to be. It definitely had less pressure from investors because it wasn't turnkey, but it ultimately had many offers on it. So we were pretty early to get in and we went ahead and bid at 515 because we felt based on the square footage and the layout of the property, the location that the 499 asking price was actually a little bit low and we figured it would appraise for a little bit more. So we were comfortable going in over asking. In addition to that, I always ask for the seller to contribute some, if not all, to of our closing costs. Uh, as the buyer of a property, you can expect anywhere from two to 4% in closing costs associated with the loan and things like that. So in this case, we offered 515, which is 16 grand over asking price and we asked the seller to contribute 8,000 toward our closing costs and pay our title fee, which usually ranges around two to $3,000. The offer was accepted and we were super pumped about that. And we went through inspection and a few things bubbled up that we were, some were expecting, some we weren't. So we actually went back to the seller and asked them to reduce the sale price to 495. They came back to us and said, we'll go down to 499. So basically we went under contract and it ended up closing this deal at a $499,000 purchase price and the seller to contribute 8K toward our closing costs plus another a right around $2,000 for our title fees. Now the reason them paying for closing costs is important is because it is less money out of pocket. I'd rather finance $8,000 with interest rates being this low uh, versus paying for those closing costs out of pocket. So by doing that, our cash on cash and total return on investment jump up a little bit. We worked with the lender and did a conventional loan and it was an investment loan. So we did 15% down and got a 4% interest rate. 
We did a very in-depth cost analysis on how much we wanted to spend on the rehab of the project and then how much it would cost to furnish a place. And after doing many Airbnb properties, we've become pretty good at forecasting these numbers. So we budgeted for $70,000 for the renovation and $65,000 for furnishing. So the down payment totaled $74,850. The closing costs that the $8,000 from the seller that they contributed to our closing costs, so it didn't cover all of it. We still had around $4,535 in closing costs. Add in the rehab and the budgeted cost for furniture, and we get a total all-in investment of $214,385. Now we're splitting all these costs up front 50-50 between us and our investing partners. And um, I'll tell you why this was such a great deal, although it sounds like a lot of money out of pocket. Um, we got a major equity grab right off the bat. And my gut feeling and comparing with similar comps in the area for the listing price of 499, I thought it was a little low, but the appraisal came back and surprised me a little bit, came back at $575,000 meaning we got $76,000 in equity right off the bat by getting the house at a price that was far below what the actual value is today. So we also have to factor in the work we're doing in the garage, which is a really big two-car garage with some added workshop space. We're gonna demo all that out and convert it to a really big theater room. Now, based on the estimated square footage of the theater room, that square footage is new usable square footage. So when we broke down our listing and our appraised value based on total square footage that they accounted for, added in the extra square footage of the new theater room, that will add an additional $75,000 in equity. Now we call this forced depreciation. Anytime you add a bedroom, add a bathroom, add additional square footage or usable space, this will typically jump up the value of the house because when you compare to other properties that recently sold in the area, appraisers will take into account the additional you know, things that you guys did to the property and you know, appraise the house based on the new after repair value. In addition to the extra square footage we're adding in the theater room, we also have to take into account all of the work we're doing to the property. We're spending a lot of money rehabbing it, redoing the paint, knocking out shelving, and adding new floors, making adjustments to the game room. We have the theater room coming in and we're doing things on the rooftop. So adding a ton of new value that wasn't there before. We're projecting this to add another forced depreciation amount of equity to the property of around $50,000, bringing the total after repair value of the house to right around $700,000. So the reason this is such a great deal is because the after repair value being 700K minus the 499, which we got it for, that is $201,000 of created equity in this deal. So just from an equity perspective, this is by far the best deal we've done. And this is only beginning because let's talk about cash flow and why it makes this deal extremely exciting as a buy and hold investment. So this property, we are going to accommodate 12 guests. And when we take into consideration all of the features of the property, we're gonna have a sauna, we're gonna have a hot tub, we're gonna have mountain views, we're gonna have a 2,500 square foot rooftop lounge area. We're gonna have a game room, a theater room, an in-law suite that's a part of the property. So if families want to separate out and have a private setting, we're gonna have that. And not a lot of properties offer that in Gatlinburg. So based on very conservative estimates, and I really do say these are conservative because I have another property in this market and it's performing extremely well and looking at similar properties listed on Airbnb today and what they're booking at and what their occupancy is, the baseline prediction of the property is as follows. Our average daily rate should be right around $550 per night, and the occupancy rate for the area is around 65%, which I do consider pretty conservative. This equates to an annual revenue of $130,488 and a monthly revenue of $10,874. To get the net operating income, we need to factor in all of these expenses, which are operating expenses, the cost to operate the property every single month, this includes taxes, insurance, utilities, Wi-Fi, budgeting for future repairs or capital expenditures, Airbnb service fees, and we get a net operating income of right around $9,307 per month. But that's not our cash flow because we do need to account something very important, which is our debt service to the bank, or in other words, principal interest and PMI, which is a portion of the mortgage payment. Since we put less than 20% down on this property, we do have to pay PMI or private mortgage insurance. So that plus our principal and interest adds up to $2,289 per month. 
Now we subtract that number from the net operating income and that brings our pre-tax monthly cash flow to $7,018. Now that number's great. And honestly, there are gonna be months in the summertime, fall, and during the holidays where this number's probably going to exceed 10 or maybe even $15,000 per month. I've seen it with our other mountain house and I'm expecting similar returns for this one. Now, some months will be lower, so this is why it's important to take an average daily rate and occupancy and get the average monthly uh, cash flow that we can expect. Now, that cash flow equates to $84,221 in profit, you know, pre-tax profit every single year. Now, that cash flow number sounds great, right? And maybe it is, I don't know, but what we need to do is look at the cash on cash return and total return on investment to determine how hard our money is actually working for us on a cash basis. So what you do for this is take the total expected cash flow for year one divided by the total amount of dollars invested out of pocket, and that will get you your cash on cash return. So we'll take the 84,221 in cash flow, divide it by the $214,385 invested out of pocket, and that gives us a 39.28 cash on cash return, which is extremely strong. That is a tremendous cash on cash return. And that is why we are so excited about this investment in addition to the equity that we're capturing up front. But we're not done there because we need to calculate the total return on investment. When we're thinking about investing in real estate from a, a holistic perspective, long-term, we need to account not just the cash flow, but equity gained from appreciation, principal pay down, and then obviously any work that we did to the property, in this case we did. So we're gonna account for all of that, add it all up, and then divide it by the total money invested out of pocket, and that will be our total return on investment. So first let's calculate principal pay down for the first year, also referred to as loan pay down. Part of your expenses every month is your debt service or the mortgage to the bank, right? So in there we have principal and interest, and principal, is gonna go up every single month, starting out at a relatively low value, and then you're gonna pay the most in interest. But every month, you pay more in principal and more in principal, while interest decreases a little bit every month. The cool part about this is since it's counted as an expense when we're calculating our cash flow, technically a portion of that, we're keeping in equity in the property, right? That's principal pay down on the loan that we have with the bank. So the guests are technically paying the house off for us. So what you do to calculate the first 12 months is go to an amortization schedule. You can go to an online mortgage calculator, punch in the investment details, and add up the first 12 months. So the first 12 months in our principal pay down for this property adds up to right about $7,692. So let's also add in any equity we gain from the rehab. And first we need to add in the $76,000 in equity we capture just from getting the property at uh, an undervalued price, so the appraisal came in a bit higher, so $76,000 right off the bat, and then we captured an additional $125,000 from the added square footage with converting the garage to the theater room and all the other work that we're doing to the property, creating additional forced appreciation or equity within the property. Also need to account for natural appreciation as well. Now, in the Gatlinburg area, the past two years has been anywhere from like eight to 10% year over year. Now. I'm more realistic and I wanna be very conservative when forecasting future appreciation because it's an unrealized gain. We don't capture that until we actually have the property refinanced or we actually go and sell the property. But we wanna account for it nonetheless because we are going to be building our net worth and our wealth over the course of time. So I use a baseline 3% year over year appreciation growth and we're gonna base this on the new after repair value which is $700,000 and that equates to $21,000 in expected appreciation. All right, so let's add all of this up. We have principal pay down, 7,692. Equity gained after appraisal report came back, $76,000. Equity from the rehab, $125,000. Appreciation from the first year based on that 3% is $21,000. And then the cash flow from year one, $84,221. That adds up to $313,913. And what we need to do is divide that by the total amount invested out of pocket which was 214,385, and that gives us a total return on investment in year one, 146.42%. That's not bad, we recoup all of our investment costs and more in year one based on the equity gained and the cash flow. So this investment, you guys can see why we're so excited about it. 
And honestly why, and sometimes not getting the turnkey properties is more beneficial. You can invest in properties that need a little bit of work, a little bit of, little bit of love, and you can gain so much equity right off the bat, which is going to be the thing that's growing your wealth significantly over the long term. Now make sure to subscribe and hang around for the next month or so. I'm going to be producing an in-depth video on before and after photos, maybe even a video walkthrough of the property showing all the changes we did and why we're so jazzed up about it. It's going to be a super fun video and I'd love to have you guys hang around uh, and see some of those videos I post in the future. Again, if you found any value in the transparency and the numbers that I provide to you guys, please do me a favor and throw a like below. It goes a long way with the YouTube algorithm helping promote this content to other people like yourself who may find benefit from it. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, definitely drop them below. I love hearing from you guys and interacting with you in the comments section. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you again in the near future.